So at this point, you've already gotten a sense of how to create a basic supply chain and the different entities that go along with every single supply chain. But now we're gonna look at a more complex supply chain, specifically the Cincinnati Seasonings case study. And we're gonna go over how you can investigate uh, your supply chain and what you can expect during your simulation. So um, in this case, if you look at the different facilities, we have a list of them. And just to show you in the Chicago store, you can edit different options within this facility. Now you can change the type of facility. So let's actually just go to the um, distribution center or the factory. Um, you can configure this to however way you want. And there are basically no limitations in the simulation software when it comes to this. So say for instance, in this factory, you wanted to have some demand of a certain product, that way you can produce more products to then distribute or send out to the distribution center. And from there, um, all worlds of possibilities are, are open. But the point is that you can change all these numbers and set up your simulation or your supply chain in any way you want to either model the real world or based on whatever your professor say, if you're a student, for example. And this is especially important because the more complex a supply chain is expected to be, the better you can expect your results and the more accurately you can um, can run the supply chain using this software and go out to the real world we invite you guys to check out information um, that you find on the internet or actual information that you've gotten from a client or of yours or some numbers that you've gotten from a credible source um, we invite you to get those numbers and put those numbers um, in, into these tabs that way you can figure out and and, and accurately um, simulate your supply chain now, if you go to vehicles, you can do absolutely the same thing. You can see that in this factory, we have a factory truck. And if you um, go to this, um, you can change different things. You can change the type of truck that you want deployed from this factory, the sizing of it. If you wanted an airplane, for instance, um, and you create a route for that airplane from either Cincinnati to Columbus, for example, it'll go in a straight line because it's an airplane and that's how airplanes travel. Whereas if there was a lake in the middle, um, it'll also go in a straight line if you selected a ship as your vehicle type. Um, and all worlds of possibilities are available, just like in the real world. So we invite you um, to get as complex as possible when um, running the simulation. That's, that's kind of very important. And once you defined your facilities, vehicles, and routes, like we've just explained, here's another tab for routes. You can add different stops. You can play around with different drop quantities if you needed uh, to deliver more items. You can uh, change the delay between departures and you can do many different things. And then once you're happy with um, the way you think your supply chain is gonna work, you can click on the simulation button. And then once that's done, a new tab will open up showing you the supply chain. Now, in this case, um, we're gonna run the speed at a fast output so that just so that you can see the different information that's outputted without actually watching it very slowly. Again, you can select the speed at which uh, the simulation runs, but also make sure that you don't have too many tabs open so that you can free up some memory and some uh, processing power for the simulation to run. It's run on the browser and partly um, on the servers of SEM Globe. So let's just run the simulation and you can see now that a bunch of different data is populated. And at some point during any of these case studies or simulations, if you haven't edited anything, you'll run in, into some issues. And you'll see, hopefully, um, just for illustration purposes, I will run into an issue uh, with this simulation. Um, but either way, I'm going to go over this, this information. You'll see that you can see the different types of facilities and as the facility, um, you can, you can see that as the days go by, the facilities information uh, has been changed in terms of profitability, um, the amount of inventory they have. So you can see that Spicy Cube now we have on a day 23, 24, about 2,500, and you can play around with the rest of the, the information. Once the simulation gets to a point where um, something is wrong and it can no longer continue, um, it'll pop up here. Something will pop up giving you information on what's going on. And you can see that it just happened. We have an error and we have run out of spicy cube in the Indianapolis store at around um, in the Indianapolis store. So let's go to the Indianapolis store. And we have run out of spicy cube at around day 31, uh, 30, 31 to 32. So we can now click back on this tab 
I'm going to select the Indianapolis store and we can play around with different information. Maybe you want to change the max storage capacity or you want to change the quantity on hand. That way it'll adjust the information. And then once you figure out what you want to change on any of the entities on your supply chain, you can now go back and reload the supply chain and then you can again run the simulation. And then you can go back and forth, kind of a trial and error situation where you can figure out what the best options are and how to better maximize the efficiency of your supply chain. Um, anyways, thank you guys for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.